And uh, here we go. That's enough of the spiel. If you like bleeding your ears out, stick <clears throat> around, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've heard him. No, no blood. I promise. <laughs> Not from the ears, anyway. Only if you subscribe. Welcome to Room Six, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me. And this guy. My guest today is a singer, songwriter, and member of the Maybe Four, who will be coming on the channel next month. So if you haven't done it already, please consider subscribing, ring the bell so you won't miss out on that video, and also all my other videos and live streams. Um, speaking of live streams, I've seen him perform around town in various places. Uh, members of the band have performed also at Soul Belly Barbecue, where uh, Hal Savar hosts a showcase of local singer songwriters, and sometimes not so local. Uh, you recently played a show at Soul Belly Barbecue with Raya, who was literally on the channel like three days ago. No kidding. No kidding. They're right here. Um, cool and, folks. Cool yeah, folks. Yeah, very cool folks. And uh, I forget who the, who else was on the bill. Damage Savage. Nice. Damage Savage. <laughs> uh, he plays key, Classy guitar. Classy blokes. Classy blokes. <laughs> they like Damage Savage. <laughs> you wearing this jacket, you say the word bloke a lot. Nice. Yes. Mm. Um, he, it's Tuesday, he, play, he plays guitar, keyboards, and saxophone, and also sings. Uh, his song, Pale Blue Dot, has been submitted to NPR's Tiny Desk Contest uh, by the band. And also, no it, love. Oh, <laughs> not a word from NPR. Hey, but you know what? You tried. His other song, That's all you can do. His other song, When You're On The Way, is included on the Taberna Costera playlist, which is a nice playlist to be on. Oh, that's not me. It was at this moment that he knew. That's <laughs> Joey. When You're On The Way, that's Joey. Oh! I didn't write that one. Oops. <laughs> I, there you go, Joe. I played piano on that recording. If That's you hear probably that, why yeah, you posted the, the piano, about it. Yeah, the piano is me. Okay. I didn't write that one. I thought you were saying it was you. But you know what? You can say I wrote it. There you go. Yeah, Joey. <laughs> Fuck Joey Hearts. If you're <laughs> watching, Joey, it's my, look at me. It's my song now. Hey, hey. I hey. get all the rights, hey. okay? Hey, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> so the 10 cent check you're getting from Spotify, that's me now. Okay, it's my song. Ten cents from Spotify? He said it. Luxury. He said it himself. Right? He's the master of sad words and songs and sad foo hours. Please welcome to the channel, Chris Dunn. Say hi. Hi. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Clink. And, uh, before we go on, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. I want to say thank you for watching. If you don't know who he is, thank you very much for watching. Definitely check him out. Check out the maybe four. Uh, check out Joey Hines, Mandolin, and uh, Russell Christian. I've got all their links down there in the um, description. Also, down there is the link for the Room 6 social media, where you can... Various ways of contacting me and also supporting the channel, whether it's buying merch. Hey, hey, hey. At room6.shop, it all goes to help out the channel or to help out the local scene. Or you can pick up a couple CDs from me as well as uh, the Patreon page where I have patron-only content, including a one-hour, unedited, unscripted audio podcast with myself and my former drummer and whiskey-drinking buddy, Sean Flume, called Two Brains, One Bottle. It's fun. We literally are like, what are you drinking? Okay, what are you drinking? Cool. And we both bring like, here's a top, here's a weird news or a question. And we also answer listener questions. Uh, sometimes we do well with it. Sometimes we're, we don't. We, uh, it's dubious. Just blame it on the whiskey, right? If yeah. Go. <laughs> but um, two brains, one bottle. Figuring life out one drink at a time. Right on. Nice. Um, all those are ways you can support the channel and also get something out of it yourself. Uh, speaking of getting something out of it, I want to thank all the previous guests who have been on the channel and subscribers like you and uh, viewers like you. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Stick around. He's going to be performing some music upstairs, both on keyboard and guitar, I believe. And uh, here we go. That's enough of the spiel. If you like bleeding your ears out, stick <clears throat> around, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've heard him. No, no blood. I promise. <laughs> Not from the ears, anyway. Only if you subscribe. So I have a question. Let, let's start this off right. You're a Cleveland fan? I am a Cleveland fan. You didn't live there though, right? Never lived there. Never even been there. Why? So, 
The story of how I jumped on that. So what happened? Very was? small bandwagon. Very small. There's, that they were very well. Welcoming. Hold on, this is the, just Cleveland Browns or Cleveland Cleveland Browns, just the Browns. Okay, you know, I'm so not like not, a Guardians fan. But you're or not like Cleveland fan. as a city just rocks. No, no. Yeah, Drew Carey's wrong. Although, you know, <laughs> why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there, I don't know. Such a random place, you know. They just probably just wanted a pyramid. Well, no, something. I'm like, okay, wait, wait. Let's look at the history of rock and roll. Hmm. Detroit. Hmm. Motown. Hmm. New York. Cleveland. Yeah. Anyway. Makes sense, right? You were saying. <laughs> Cleveland Browns. Hey, I'm a Niners fan, so believe me, I understand, like, just constantly being I was a Niners fan oh, until right. I became... Wow, you went. You downgraded. Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. At me, at, at me in the comments. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy, right? But uh, <laughs> um, so you know when I was I my older brother was a San Francisco fan, so he was a 49ers fan. Uh, so when I was like in my youth, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I was, I'm gonna I'm just gonna appropriate everything my older brother. Is. Sure, I'm gonna be cool like my do. older brother. So, but then, you know, when I got older, uh, I think I got into the bandwagon. I started, like, I never really played fantasy, fantasy football before. I got invited to a league at work, and I started watching football games, pretty much, because I never was much of a football fan. But since I got into fantasy, I started watching actual football games. Like, oh, this is dope. This is cool, you know? So I got into football that way. I was like, I need a team, but like, who's going to be my team? I didn't want it to be the 49ers. That's my brother's team. I don't want to, I, I want to be me. Right. So I'm like, who was the worst team in the league? And I think this was around Ooh. 2016. And oh, yeah. At the time, were. they won one game in two seasons. Yeah, they won one like, game. They, they were like 0-16 oh, and, and like, yeah. yeah. The, 70, it was, the 72 Rams were like sweating their record. <laughs> it was, it was dismal. It was bad. It was like. Those are my guys. Those are my folks, you know. So I jumped <laughs> I jumped on. Yeah. So it was ironic at first, obviously. Like, you know, it was yeah. kind of douchey at first. But, like, you know, then I started buying merch and it stopped being ironic, right? Everything's ironic till it's not. Right. So <laughs> there, There is this nice, not cool factor or even hip factor. Yeah. But there's a certain feeling of nobleness where you're like, I'm supporting because they suck. Or I'm supporting even though they suck. Like, yeah. you know, I have, I have actually a jersey... That's a uh, it's forty number forty four. Uh, Tom sure. Tom Rathman. And if okay. you're a 49er fan, you know that name. He for a long time and uh, was just a huge part of their offense. But it's also it's a it's the old throwback with red and, and, and white lettering. Yeah, and <clears throat> it also works because he was an Oklahoma Sooner. Yeah. So yeah, the whole thing. Uh, but I digress. So you're you and you you went Cleveland on purpose. But as a joke, and then it became... Until it wasn't, right? Everything, you know. <clears throat> right. It's like like when adults say, like, kid lingo, ironically, right. until it's not ironic, and kids like, oh, the adults are saying it's not cool anymore. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> it's just like, lit! <laughs> Bet, fam! <laughs> oh, I just, That's cap, yo. I literally just turned 50. Real mid, man. <laughs> I literally just turned 50, and I, I find myself, without meaning to, because of all the time I spend on social media because of this. Yeah. I still find I say like bet, <laughs> big move, and and I can feel the cringing from my fourteen year old. Your child's like, Ugh. yeah. Oh man, um, it's great. So you're a music. You're currently a music teacher. I didn't say this in the intro. Currently a music teacher at Matter Academy. That's correct. What do you teach specifically? You name it, I probably teach it. So you're your voice teacher, your guitar teacher, all of it, or are you just teaching music theory, or what? I, oh, this is for like youngins, right? Younglings. I teach middle school, six to eight. Oh, uh, great I'm age. Sorry, have another drink. <laughs> middle school. Ugh, that's yeah. the trenches. Yeah. So you adults watching? If you got a fourteen year old, they're why I drink. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. The kids are cool. I like the kids. It's a cool gig, you know. If if you if you get along with kids, if you know how to like you know conduct yourself around them, like it's a cool gig. But yeah, so I teach mariachi, ooh, choir, guitar, band, orchestra, do it all. When but, you say you teach mariachi, like your kids are playing all those traditional mariachi instruments? Yep, they got the vihuela, the guitarron. I don't have the, the harp. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I remember there was a restaurant real close by we used to go to all the time. My, in fact, my kids first solid food was the sopa fideo con tomate 
that they they served there uh, is called um what was that place called? I'm talking to Father Law. Taco Bell? No. <laughs> Don Tor Taco. No, it was um. <laughs> <laughs> what was the the Mexican Roberto. restaurant place called? Roberto. <laughs> the, the, the Mexican restaurant where Ari had the, like the sopa fideo and the they the, mer- the band would come around. What was the place we used to go to all the time? Yeah. And there's a there's a one with like kind of the Michel Ocon. Oh, Lindo yeah, yeah, yeah. Ocon. Lindo Michel Ocon. Lindo Michel Ocon. And the owner. Yeah, that place is lit. Dude's face is on the sign, right? Mm-hmm. Mariachi band comes playing by the tables. You're yeah. Like, they frequent the bass player is the freaking owner. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's the, the guitar boom, boom. guy? That's and he's dope. taking tips and shoving them in the hole in his <laughs> face. And I'm like, that's that's how you do it, man. That's yes. lit, fam. Yes. No cap. But they loved seeing my kid. And they'd be like, Mickey, 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 Mickey Mouse. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Like, <laughs> but they were, they were good. It was a sh- it, we were sad when the restaurant had to close. But anywho, I digress. This is about him. Um. Hey, we can we can shout shout out Lindo Mitchell Khan, man. Well, they're hey. closed. So. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. Yeah. Um, Want to talk earliest musical influence? Okay, like earliest. We're talking. What is that first memory you have of? I want to do that. Whether it was an artist or a genre or a particular song or you went to a show or what? What is what was the moment where you, you really decided to go down this dark and twisted path? When I so there's when I there's like two paths I guess there's like when I actually started playing music uh-huh. and there's when I actually liked playing music so I, I want the <clears throat> when you went when you had that moment that, that lightning moment of oh I, so that's a, I want to do that I can I think so that like when I realized like oh yeah I want to make this poor decision for the rest of my life you know? <laughs> like, when I did that um, high school so it was high school oh you started late well, that's when I decided. Like I, I had, like I've been playing music since I was young, but I didn't really start caring about it till I was like older. So I'm lucky I got that time in early, you know. So I didn't have to like. By the time I decided I wanted to do it, I had to do all that foundational work. But mm-hmm. it was around my junior year of high school, and uh, I went to a school, Chaparral High School. Not not a great school, definitely at the time either. Um, the band program was in shambles. My first two years were awful. Um, we had like this guy, super wet behind the ears, didn't know what he was doing, had no control over the class. Band it was a joke. I literally left band after my freshman year. I quit. And the only reason I came back was because they stuffed me in an auto shop class with like a bunch of guys ah. that looked like future felons. And they were <laughs> going to jump me after school, you know, like a bunch of like cholos. Not and stuff that there's like that. anything wrong with being a mechanic or in, in that world whatsoever. Yeah, but I've seen, I'd seen these kids jump people after school. So okay, I didn't want I didn't, I didn't to be in a classroom with them. So I went to my band teacher. I was like, hey, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get jumped after school. Lesser of two evils. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'll come back because, you know, like those kids in auto shop are kind of scary. So I came back. And uh, that, public school, and that was <laughs> that. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here playing my crappy songs for your viewers. They're but not crappy. <laughs> they're 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 moderately nice at the worst. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. But so, but that you know, it's like, how does that get you into music, right? But my junior year, they let that guy go, and the guy who replaced him, mm-hmm. uh, he's a, he's a local legend, Paul Boyney. He uh, teaches over at Arbor View now, I believe. But he's a phenomenal teacher. Changed my life. And, like, jazz band. My junior and senior year, just, like, studying jazz and playing saxophone and stuff like that. That that made me decide, I think I want to keep doing this. So, like, under his mentorship, I, like, figured out how do I go to college. And I applied for, I auditioned at UNLV to be a jazz major. And kind of so all took off after that. See, that's surprising because your music doesn't reflect jazz a lot. Yeah. So you just... Yeah, you and Lovey killed that out of me. But ah, that's another that's wow. another discussion. Okay. But yeah. I, I, maybe I should start asking. I like jazz so going... The most depressing I, I, I like jazz here? going in. I didn't like it so much going out after I yeah. got my diploma. But And a lot of people who study music in college will tell you that. They, they lose oh, their love me, for I, it. Oh, believe me. I studied college. I studied voice for two years. And yeah. when I suddenly found myself in a class called... Pedagogy of the 20th century grandmasters. Yeah. I was sitting there going like, I just want to sing. Yeah. I don't care. I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to teach this. I don't care. And that's when I decided to drop out of college uh, for the first time. And 
I was like, I've never just lived and worked. How I'll many times did you drop out? <laughs> Two, I. Three. What's the magic number? Was it six? No, no it was okay. It was actually. It was. I've been to college six times. Now that you mention it. Uh, yeah, I I spent out of high school, went to college as you do. Okay. And did uh three years of that. Mm-hmm. I started at San Diego State and ended up in a community college. So that tells you, like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm wasting <laughs> a lot of my money or my parents' money, and and I I need to figure out things. And, you know, I'll still knock out all this core stuff while I figure it out. Sure. And then what happened was, I said, I've never just lived and worked before, and I quit, and I worked, and I hated it, and I met somebody, <laughs> and I went back, and eventually it was, hey, you know, you have enough units, you can just get an associate's in general ed, and that will at least get you into, like, kind of management, middle management, retail type stuff, make okay. more money. And when you're working retail and food, that's attractive. Because you're like, at least I can make more money and be miserable, you know? And I did. And it took me eight years of life. I mean, it's nice to not be homeless, for sure. It took me eight years of life and five years of actual college to get an associate's. Fifteen years later. Well, that makes me feel less bad about my record. But wait, there's more. (laughs) Fifteen years later, I just finally, finally go back to college and get my, my bachelor's in IT system security. Uh, thanks to University of Phoenix, got a real job. Good for you. Uh, Good for I, I'm now working in the tech, in the tech support uh, IT field, and I, I love it. it. It I'm a medium fish in a small pond, which is nice. You know, I get a lot what of leeway for? to do room six stuff. Thank you very much, boss, if you're watching. Okay. Um, and yeah, so so you were hit in the face by a cello. Oh yeah, that's the reason why I don't like jazz anymore. <laughs> Is brain damage. <laughs> no, no, not really. No, but um, so there, I know I know a little bit of the story. So when yeah, so when you're a music major, you're required to do to attend concerts. You know, because well, yeah, no, no one's gonna want to watch a freshman cello recital, so they force the students to watch them, right? right. So you gotta do it for credit, and I think yeah, you have to do four semesters of it. So one, I. I think I was at like a, it was called convocation. So like every Doesn't Wednesday. Doesn't sound like a church function? Yeah. I was at a convocation, which is like they do it every Wednesday afternoon. And it's just kind of like a showcase of like, you know, the classical department. And they play little. Showcase. Yeah. You know, so, but it's just like a bunch of like the undergrad, like they're in their first two years. They're um, pre-barrier jury students, you know, so they're like still like in the, like the early trench era of like playing music or whatever like trench, it is. Like it's yeah, where you got to prove yourself through the trenches before they let you yeah, into yeah, like yeah. The, the good ensembles or whatever. So I'm like in the alleyway and when this thing ends, this like, this cello player in front of me, she gets up and she's like in a rush and I'm like getting up and she just like freaking decks it past me and just like cello right to the face so was it the head sock or the body it was like the body oh that's not yeah, so that, bad that, i thought i'm no. picturing tuning pegs right no, in your man, face got that, man that thick that thick cello booty in my face yeah. dude. <laughs> so it was more of an oar paddle yeah wow. yeah it was, yeah it was like getting hit in the face by a, <laughs> by a one fridge or something but uh yeah so it, it, it and now you're it, it, yeah it like and now she's your girlfriend no just it, no no <laughs> no i don't date cello players oh But um, I don't date other musicians. I don't recommend it. If you're a musician, don't date another musician. Terrible idea. But. Yeah, like my wife has. <laughs> my wife has been to exactly two of my original music shows. Mm-hmm. One was at the House of Blues because, yeah, that's kind of a deal. And the other, she came and did do Sudoku while it was. Um, uh, I'm singing my heart out to her, and and so she doesn't go. But also, yeah. she's allergic to pot smoke, so it really limits. The kind of show she can go oh, to. Oh, yeah. Well, no so, reggae shows or <laughs> Scott shows. Yeah. For sure. Hey, P Funk's playing, honey. Um, yeah. I ain't going to be there. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> kind of allergic to. Yeah, my wife has never been the merch girl or, or you know, the, 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 I support you by being at every show. She supports me by letting me go to shows and she supports me by letting me do this channel. Same. Yes. Same. I'm in the same position. Shout out to the ladies. Shout out to our partners who, uh, without them, we would be 
horror in many ways. Those those of you that are dating dorks that want to express themselves, we salute you. Yes. Mm. But yeah, so that's man, that's a deep cut, man. That's like almost ten years ago. But back to college. But yeah, so like it left a mark on my face, oh, and obviously, geez. like I put the picture on Facebook. It's like, dude, like yeah, I didn't actually just, see the picture. Oh, dude, I had like a big old like a red well, weld on my face. I had a red, I had a red weld on my face. You know, yeah, that must have been where I found it. Yeah, short hair, Chris. Yes, yeah, short hair. And that's right. You were very look, short. Looked hair, like Chris. a different person. Whereas, uh, coincidentally, I used to have hair long as yours. Really? Yep. And it made me look very old because it gave me a very high forehead. I, I have a high forehead. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like, do too. But believe it or not, I got I, it. I've gotten comments where, like, oh, you know, you're balding or whatever. No, no. There's, nah, I just got It's there. I just got a room six head. Ooh, yeah. Merch, guys. I wear this the for room, the, the, the merch. Room, the but also I wear it because <laughs> I don't want, I got enough going on just cleaning up the kitchen for these things. I don't want to worry about my hair and stuff. Um, no, it, it's funny how we. I was talking off camera to him about how I hated hats until I was forty, and my my wife gave me a couple hats, and it became a thing. And now I have you know a way to. You gotta find the right hat, you know. Well, well now not everybody has heads for hats. Well, now it's become a thing where I show up to an event and people go, "Room six is here," and that's why I wear the freaking hat. Bong. Yeah, regardless of whatever merch shirt I have on, because some of my shirts aren't very clear, like I made them, you know? Right on. So regardless of the shirt, it, it's, this is the thing, you know? Anywho, I digress. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly about gear. Now, you've got a keyboard, and you've got a piano, and a saxophone. Sure. When you're playing a normal show with the May before, what are you rocking? What am I rocking? I'm rocking everything. Feel free every- to get as rocking, granular as you want. Rocking everything, man. I, oh. I play, I'm like the... He just can't stop it. I'm the he just can't, can't stop can't, it. Hey, stick around, stick around. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like I, I'm the I'm the instrument whore of the band. Like I, I play a lot of different things. But um, so I do play keyboard. I play guitar. So like right. you know the maybe four or like a revolving but door. Suppose someone wanted to get your sound. What keyboard are you are you using? So currently, like the one oh, yeah, oh, that one. I brought today. Mm-hmm. That's a uh, old reliable. It's a Casio Privia PX three hundred and fifty. That's that's old school, isn't it? I, I bought it like ten years ago, I was when Ca- I was a broke college kid. But Casio itself, it's just, yeah, it's yeah a, they've been in the game a long time. But well, you know, they make a they make a good affordable product. So if you're like trying to get in the keyboard game, mm-hmm. you want something affordio, affordable. The Casio Privia series is pretty solid. I got that one for around like I think eight hundred bucks at it, the time. It, yeah, as a keyboard, it, it's it's got you know all the um, all the Inputs and outputs you need. It, it's actually pretty good sound. I, it's a solid. It's a solid stage piano. It functions as a solid stage piano. It has a handful of sounds, but you know, it's like you, the electric piano sounds are okay. The organs are kind of hit and miss, and you got your general MIDI. Who's and stuff playing like a that. keyboard for the organ sound? You play an organ for the. Organ yeah, sound. that's true. I mean, if you're trying to like, you know, yeah. if you get like signed up for a gig, but and I'm then just you saying, have but, a Fender guitar. Um. Yeah, I do have a Fender acoustic. It's just so that's what you brought. Together. I traded that with a rapper for like a. Okay, wait, what? Yeah, so, like, a lot of my gear is, like, hand-me-downs. I don't really, like, buy oh, yeah, a lot of do. gear. Like, I traded it. So, like, back in the open mic days, like, uh, 10 years back, like, in the Vegas on the mic days, I would... Back shout then... Out, shout out Mike Z! Mike Z, if you're still alive, dude, kind of just... <laughs> he's alive. He, I, he's alive. Every now and then I see a post from him on, on the, uh, he, he, on the he, face twitch. He's smart. He got out of the music game. He got out of the tech game, like you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to work for uh, a place where he... Held coding events. Yeah. No. Really smart dude. I respect him a lot. But, you know, back then, you know, I, I wasn't as out of my shell back then. Oh. Like, I was like a nervous college kid. And, you know, I couldn't sing to save my life or anything. I wouldn't dare, like, do that. But, like, I was pretty decent at the keys, right? So mm-hmm. I would just go, would not say a word. I would just go up, play my song, get off, dude. And so... Thank you very much. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. I'd be like... Bleh, bleh, you know? <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for not booing. Yeah. yeah. But um, I met like a handful of cool people in the scene, a lot of rappers, and there was this rapper, his name was Jack Frost. No way. You ever hear of him? He's not around. I think he No, was. it's just a cool name. That's yeah, all. Jack Frost. Interesting dude in himself, but like he was like this it, guy is from- Is he still rapping, you know? He moved, uh, last I heard, he moved to Austin, Texas a few years uh. back. Um, but he was also an aspiring keyboardist on uh, top of playing. He's an interesting dude. He was like a German guy. He's like from Germany. He spoke oh, wow. spoke fluent German. Wow. But like this like tall, like 
You know, right, like, right. like XL M&M looking guy, like white blonde German guy. XL M&M. Yeah, he, he's stocky <laughs> dude. Tall stocky dude. He's I, like, know, I can totally picture him just based yeah, on those. I mean, yeah, like if, if M&M's fun size, this guy was like super <laughs> king size, right? Like fun super size. super king size M&M, you know. But he was a super guy and he wanted to take piano lessons with me. Uh-huh. So being like the broke college kid, I was like, oh, hell yeah, dude. So I, I, I went to go hang out with him. I went to his pad. He like lived in the studio. Like in the north side of town, not in a great neighborhood, but we're just hanging out in a studio apartment, and I'm like showing him some like tricks on the piano and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and we like lay down a couple tracks. I played like some piano, like I laid some piano tracks for him, and he had that acoustic guitar that I brought today, and I was like playing around, I was like yeah, man, you want it? I'll like trade it with you if you have something you want to trade for. It's like maybe like a bass guitar or something. So like I had this old Yamaha, Yamaha, I, Yamaha, yeah. If you want to guitar or a motorcycle there you guys but <laughs> or, or or generator <laughs> or a generator dude they're great i recommend them but so i was like okay so like i tell you what i'll bring him at our next lesson so i gave him like this yamaha bass and like just a piece of shite guitar like an electric guitar that like i got from my, i helped my brother move out of his old place and his roommate had this garbage guitar so, God, you can have it i don't want it so, yeah not worth what you could scrape out of your ass. It was a piece of crap. It was, wow. it was a piece of crap. But like, I gave him those two guitars, and he gave me that guitar. Mm-hmm. So um, it's like a Fender C something eighty or something like that. It's like it's like an intermediate level acoustic so, guitar, but it's okay. It gets the job done. But it it I, I the best I can, I can describe is it fits the music. Yeah, it, it is not a. Here's what I can do. No, it's it's not flashy yeah. by any means. It is a very, song for very, songwriters. It's a very modest yeah. guitar. It's I like, feel like it's a song for it's a guitarist. It's a guitar yeah. for songwriters, not a guitar for guitarists. For sure, yeah. So yeah, I, if you're not I, trying to do anything fancy, if you're just doing bar yeah. chords and stuff, sure, man, it, yeah, it'll yeah. do the job. Yeah. So, but the story behind how I got that guitar is really cool. So, Jack Frost, if you're watching, man, hope you're still alive too. But <laughs> <laughs> don't die. Cool guy, cool dude. And Sometimes. that's how I got. But just like that. And even like I have a I have a Roland Juno, which is usually what I play with the maybe four, and that one I got from a local dude named um, Michael Brett. You might know him. He's in that band. This I is know Brett Road. Michaels. No, just... Brett Michaels. <laughs> Brett Michaels. If you're I don't know who Brett, Brett Michaels. Is. Michael Brett. He's a. I was briefly in a band with him and Michael Lewis Austin. Mm. The, him I know. The two Michaels. I uh, I've actually been trying to get Michael Lewis Austin and um, what's the band he. Zelda. Call it the Michael and Chris band because right. it was two Michaels and it was me. No, no, all together. The all together. We were talking about getting them on the channel. The all together. I remember them. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was saying. like post all together. That's like when he left them the first time, and he like tried to make his own band and it didn't work out too well. Eh. But Michael Brett, who was the bass player, and he was like also like a successful businessman that was trying to like do music because it was fun. Yeah. So we'd always rehearse re- 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 at his cool pad, but. I got that Roland Juno from him, and like I just trade bases away for equipment, I guess, because he like I had this cool like fretless bass. It was like um, it was like a my first fretless bass guitar because it had the lines on <laughs> Fisher Price. It, it, it had the lines on, you know, but I had it from high school because I played in a bass in a band in high school, mm. and it was like a fretless bass, but it had like the frets drawn on. So it was like a my first fretless bass, and he's like, "Hey man, that's cool, you know. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll trade you the Juno for that bass, you know. I want the fretless bass." Best. Yeah, so I got a Juno and I got a Fender acoustic guitar, yeah. so I rock those. Um, I have a Fender Stratocaster that I don't bring out as often, but it's pretty nice, I, really nice little axe, American made, pretty cool stuff. You know, I wanted to ask you a quick question regarding the Maybe Four, and I I know this is a group that of it. it if you don't know the Maybe Four. You should check them out. Definitely, they're four songwriters, and each of them plays on each of the other's music. Like watching them play is like watching four acts play in one set. It's it's, it's really awesome. I always say it's if Bob Dylan got split into four people, Ooh. and that fourth person got split into four people. Were those four people that Bob... to get together were one sixteenth of Bob Dylan? We're just a revolving door. Bob Dylan always gave me hope as a singer songwriter that maybe I could make it. You don't need to be a good singer <laughs> like, or attractive. <laughs> it's got to be this weird dude. You just get other people to sing your music and you're, you're set. But um, whoever knew a guy named Bob could be a successful musician. Hey, it's like how do you change your name from Robert to Bob? And actually, become think, like the how many famous musicians can you think of named Bob? A lot. 
Really? Bob Seger. Bob Dylan, Bob, Bob Seger, Bob, Bob Seger, Marley. Bob Marley. There's a lot of them. Oh, I can't think of any besides those three. They're around. Just kind of like, <laughs> probably in the East Coast. Just do your own research. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, what? when are we going to see some maybe for merch? That's a good question. We're still working that one out. but um, Yeah. Guys. We do. We have some ideas. And we definitely want to maybe get some shirts out. We have, um, we want to make magnets. Because if you if you're a fan of the band already, you'll notice we kind of like do like a weekly shit post or a meme. Ah, fair enough. And we were thinking, and Manda uh-huh. already went on our initiative. Like, if you come to my house, I have like maybe four magnets on my fridge. But she'll like take the memes that I make and turn. Oh, them you in. make most of the memes. I, I'm the meme lord. I'm, I make. I write I all the. It was j- Joey all this time. I write all the jokes. I make all the pictures. Like I'm that the, totally I'm, makes sense. I'm the now. meme lord guy. So yeah, I, I no, make. No, the, you sh- I can see a shirt with. Like it, I'm make it look homemade, guy. kind of. Yeah, yeah. I can see the shirt with the the the, the memes on it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I digress. But yeah, magnets. Think about magnets, shirts. So right. eventually, that's still in the brainstorming phase. But twenty twenty three, maybe. I don't know. By the way, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using that room six social media link that I mentioned earlier, or my email address is in the description as well. We'll have a good time. And uh, like I said, if you want to be reviewed. I'll do my best and give you a nice review video. Moving on. Actually, what do you say we take a booze break? Because I'm almost empty and I think you are too. I'm getting close, yeah. Booze break. We're back. And Chris gave me a gift. This is his CD, Follow Your Art. Is it available anywhere? Uh, You can find it on Bandcamp. Cool. Uh, if you want a CD, I usually carry it in my trunk. If you run them into me, I'll nice. give you a copy. Is or the, you can buy is, them on there. Is this album art available online? Yeah, if you look it up, cool. it's on there. It's, it's I'll on put the album camp. cover online. Um, and it's uh, from 2016? 16, 2016. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's not new, but it's his newest thing. It's going to be on Spotify in a couple of weeks. I'm finally putting it on Spotify. So. Nice, nice. So, yeah, you can get, definitely get in on the ground floor on this. This is called Rocky. There you go. Sick. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you sit, stay, stay, stay. stay. In the meantime, I wanted to ask you two more questions, and then you're done. Sure. You made it. Yay. Almost. Uh, So easy. Number one. Actually, three more. I lied. I lied. It's my (laughs) show. I do what I want. Now, you've been with the Maybe Four for like a year now? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a year? A quarantine-born band? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like kind of on the back end of quarantine. Is this your first band that you've been part of? No. No. I was going to say, I didn't think so, but I couldn't find anything online. No? No. So, I wanted to ask you, since you've done a year with Maybe Four, we'll, mm-hmm. say, we'll call it a year, you've done lots, some, you've done enough shows that you've got probably some good memories from shows. What is your favorite show memory playing with the Maybe Four? And it could be good, bad, whatever. Early on in the infancy of the Maybe Four, we were our... Early stomping grounds was at the Goldmine Tavern. Yes, yes, it was. That's where I first met you. I believe. Yes, yes, it was. And uh, at uh, it wasn't an open mic. It was kind of a showcase. A showcase. It was a showcase. But that what was our I, first. Oh, what was his name? What's his name? He still does it there. I think. Jeremy. I don't remember. Jeremy. I've, I've been yeah. once. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So that's that was where we did our first show, and the first time I played with them, Russell was absent because he was out of town. So it was just me, Joey, and Manda. I think that was the first time I saw Joey play bass. I, I didn't know he could play bass. Yeah. And yeah. I was impressed. I was pretty, pretty good, at it too. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a very... To be fair, that was, that was... Was that a couple years ago? Or was that a year? It was like a year ago. It was last summer. Yeah. It was last July. That was the infant, infancy of me going out exactly. and doing shows, I think. It was exactly a year ago. Yeah. But we were playing, and we were in the middle of playing Manda's song, Smoke Signal. Check her album out. Uh, Wild and Free, that's on Spotify. Yes, it is. But we were, um, we were playing Smoke Signal. It's a very like nice, as you call it, a palate cleanser, right? It's mm-hmm. easy It's easy on the ears. Yep. And it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful song. It's I a very the album, actually. So yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's a great song. It's a great tune. It's one of my favorite of hers. And we're playing it. It's a very nice tune. And like a bar fight breaks out in the middle of I remember the that. Yeah. I was there. And yeah, it wasn't a bar dudes, fight like dudes. everybody was fighting. It was just two dudes ready to like go at it. Yeah. And, and it just made a whole thing. And we were just like awkwardly playing on. We didn't stop. Yeah. But this is going on. We're watching this fight unfold in front of us. And yeah. it just looks like shit's about to go down. This is the same show where some woman 
heard Manda sing and didn't know her music from nothing, but somehow was singing, just oh, it touched her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Same show. So you had both opposite uh, extremes. Yeah, wonderful Hinder Tucky women. But it, it was the kind magical. of it was the kind of fight where everybody was just looking at him, going like, "What are you doing?" It wasn't a fight, fight like where the it was just words. You were just waiting for it to escalate. It's like an atomic bomb yeah. about it's like, oh man, are these guys gonna do? It? Are they because like they're it looked like their women were holding him back. I was like playing yeah. keys. At first, but, I thought the fight was like I thought someone was attacking a woman. I was I actually was about to stand up, yeah, and, and be like, guys, what the fuck, no. There's the door. <laughs> it was it was super awkward. Yeah, and even in the middle of the song, Manda like broke act. He's like, come on, guys, really, like, we gotta fight. Yep. And it was so funny. It, it was such a punk rock moment, it felt like. It was like, oh, because I, I think that was like maybe, I think that might have been our second show together. I don't remember. First or second show. Yeah. Like, we had barely played. We were we were super green. And just like, all right, we have like our first show fight, you know? And yes. of all the songs that people get, get in a fight during, it was Smoke City. And the weird thing is, so, Goldmine Tavern is not like a biker bar, you know? I mean, there's bikers there, of course. But it, it's Old Town Henderson. On Water Street. Water Street. I've done a review of it. And it is not like you don't fear for your life going there generally. That's what made it so (laughs) You know, you wouldn't think, but like I came back later and a full on like brawl broke on inside. Like that's two strikes. I think it was was like another showcase. I think it was like two months later. But literally, two months. I don't know. I don't know. I think think just like the pandemic made a lot of people crazier. I think people are just a lot more anxious. There's definitely a lot more angst because I think just all around, like if you like people's job sucks more because people are like more, yeah, just people are harder to deal with. And I, I think it's just a lot of the isolation. The thing is, being it's, in your it's, house it's, a it's a very weird environment over there because you're on Boulder Highway and yeah. you're kind of like, you know, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> sorry, you're on Boulder Highway and you, you feel like, okay, I'm just. I mean, I'm not, well, no problem. You turn right on Water Street, suddenly you're in Hendertucky. You it's go right past, there on the border of Hendertucky, yeah. You go past Boulder Highway on Lake Mead, and you're like, suddenly I'm in Hendertucky. Yeah. It's suddenly a whole other environment, and you do have to be like, all right. But I've never seen a fight there before that night, which was yeah. weird. And think about it. Like, when's the last time you were in a bar that you saw an actual fight happen? It's been a while. Yeah, so definitely, probably more so. I felt so bad for Amanda, especially. It was, it was, it, it was interesting. It was interesting, but mm-hmm. we didn't stop. We finished the song, right. the and luckily thing, the fight didn't escalate. Yeah, at that point in my, I'm going to call it a YouTube career. It's been three and a half years. At that point in the thing, I wasn't where I am now at shows where I'm taking photos and I'm shooting video and I'm putting together in my head how the review video is going to go. Right. It was. I was there to support. Yeah, and so I was there, and I was looking at it going like, Wah. "Yeah, no one's getting up. I'm gonna have to get up and talk to these guys." And I was just about to, and then it, it kind of deescalated or got moved. Yeah. Um. So that's a that's a that's stand- your favorite show ever. That, that's the most standout, and that's in awesome. My, and yeah, no, I, I it reminds me of a not to make this about me, but it reminds me of a show I did uh, with a cover band where we're playing. It's New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. four hour gig. We're playing bike. This is a biker bar. Okay, Mr. D's. So it's just yeah, another two. Like it's a biker bar. This is no, you know, and generally we have no problems. They love us. They know us. We play there once a month. Sure. Suddenly, somebody who works there runs across the dance floor with a mop to the bathrooms. Yeah, guy got stabbed. He lived, but it was just one of those. Uh, during the break, we're like, what was that all about? Did, did a toilet explode? What happened? And uh, he's like, no, guy got stabbed. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Something else happened that night I'm not going to talk about. I've talked about before. But suffice to say, watch your drinking, folks. Biker, anyway. biker bar, man. It's a biker bar. Yeah. Right? All right. Um, quick question for you. Which was better, playing piano in London Subway or the Metro or getting a Stouty? Oh, man. And, and, and Go ahead and explain what a Stouty is. So a Stouty... You go to Dublin, if you go to the Guinness storehouse, you can get your picture printed on a Guinness stout. In so the they, foam. In the foam. So uh, 2019, I believe, is when I took that trip. Me and a, yep. some buds of mine, we went to Dublin, we went to London, we went to Spain. It was really cool. But we went to the Guinness storehouse, 
and me and a couple of my buds, we got a stouty, we got our, which is a selfie on a stout. It's actually a legitimate picture. Like, it's a pretty it looks good. good. Yeah, yeah, it looked great. It was worth, it wasn't that expensive either. Like, it wasn't. Really? I was yeah. going to ask, did they charge you? How much it, They charge you, I think it was like five, I want to say five euros or something like that. Totally reasonable. Yeah, like it, it wasn't. For, for a moment like Yeah, it was that. like five or ten euros. I can't even remember, you know. That was, and that was when the euro was worth more than the dollar. Ah. Okay, so. I, yeah, now the, the dollar is worth <laughs> more. Oh, well, now it's like, I think. Like a hundred bucks, a hundred euros is a hundred and fifty. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. The glow up is real. The dollar, <laughs> even though we're still okay. I don't want to. Let's not. I don't want to fall into economics, but please don't. Um, go yeah, there. that's another sewer cesspool conversation. I don't want to have. We might as well talk about. Let's talk about record labels. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Yeah. Let's um, talk about the music. Yeah. Business. So that'll get. We're gonna get cynical really quick if we go down that route. But yeah, right. The study was really cool. Um, I think. Playing piano in the London subway was probably like a really cool memory because I, w- me and I mean, I mean think, that piano is just there for anybody to play, right? Yeah, well, in the in the yeah the London Underground, they like have these pianos around town, like in the subways and on the streets, right? And it was like some kind of like artist project they had going at the time, but you know, these one of these street pianos that people can play. So I think we were just leaving um, the Harry Potter train station. It's called a uh, King Station. I was going to say like they that. don't call it the Harry Potter King yeah, Station. Yeah, no, it's called like Harry King's Cro- King's Crossing. Oh, it's called you, King. J.K. Rowling. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it's called King's Crossing, and we came. We were like leaving Platform Nine and Three Quarters or whatever, and then I uh, just saw the piano. I got to play, and I I played Britain's very own Tears for Fears. <laughs> uh, I played. Um, he sound checked with that today. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. For those of you that don't know. I record the performances before the interview. Spoiler. Behind the scenes. Here we go. Yeah, it's very Tarantino. But we get that we get that out of the way and then we drink. It's very pulsation. So, um, it, it's, uh, yes. The deep dive on Room 6. Yeah. But um, he, he started playing. I was like, I know that song. Why don't yeah. I know that song? But what, but what was perfect to you, it was like the chair. So I was playing in London. So it was cool. Like I'm playing in another country. Right. And like some bloke. In a suit, just walks by. He just slams a pound on the piano. If you watch, you can probably aggressively tip. Yeah, <laughs> like if you like, yeah, he like he stops. He's like, God damn, that's <laughs> good. Good day, good day, good job, good night. And he just like slapped a pound on the piano. Right. And it was just it well, was shit. Maybe it, I'll it was maybe I'll just hang out here for my vacation. It, it was a great it was a great moment. How long did you play there? I just did the two songs. I did that and I did um another song. I think I did you played um, two songs. You got tipped. Nice. Yeah. How much did he give you? A pound? A pound. He slapped a pound coin. Fair. Yeah. Also worth more than the dollar at the time. Yeah. I don't know what's that right now, but... So, I mean, that, that's... So, the Stouties are cool, though. Like, Stouties are dope. Yeah, if no, you're st- ever in Dublin, go, go to the Guinness store house, get a Stoutie. It's dope. Go with your bud, your buddies, your girlfriends, whatever. Bachelorette party, bachelorette party. Highly recommend it. Don't say bachelorette party. <laughs> we talked offline. Uh, uh, off camera. Anyway. <laughs> that is cool. I mean, you can't... Keep it obviously. It's it's yeah. going to disappear. But I got I got the picture. I got yeah, the did. video. The memory, which is why you saw it when you're screening me. Make sure I was deep dive. On the show, make, right on. Make sure I didn't have ties to scrupulous peoples and stuff. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I honestly <laughs> just say, what can I ask that he's gonna be like? Oh God, I forgot about that. Anyway, last yeah. question. You made it. Nice. Let's pretend we're talking to little Chris. Okay. What we're doing is we're talking to new musicians, but also we're we're talking to you. Mm-hmm. Little, little Chris. What is one thing you wish someone had told you before you got into the music business? Before I got into the music Yeah, business. don't say change your strength. What is one piece of advice you wish someone had given you? I ask this of all my friends. Yeah, am I going to give the generic can Just be yourself. Just be yourself. You do you, boo. Hey, little Chris, don't change a goddamn thing. You're perfect <laughs> the way you are. Okay, ah. You're going to turn out just fine. Um, I think what I would... Tell you're gonna dress just like your dad. You're gonna be a used car salesman. <laughs> it's gonna work out, dude. You're gonna make a pound in London. It's gonna be great. You can make that pound last a whole ten minutes Take before you get a pound town. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. no, seriously. Let's pretend you're talking to your students. Then, what do you wish someone? No, so, what do you want them to know about getting into music? Um, I guess I would always just tell young people in general. Yeah, younger people. But I don't get older. I guess. Be a but twat. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I would say get comfortable with being embarrassed. 
Because yes. if you can be, if you're not afraid to be embarrassed, you're bulletproof. Because half, well, people, unless you're like kind of a personality already, which some people are, mm -hmm. but if you're like me when I was younger, I was very introverted and I was very shy. And just, just get embarrassed, dude. Just mm -hmm. do whatever you can, find reasons to get embarrassed so you just become numb to it. You know, just like ask girls out that are out of your league or something. Like just go do all these things that you're not comfortable with. And that alone will help you with your stage presence. Mm -hmm. That'd be number one. That'd be number two would be find people that you feel comfortable being creative around. Because a lot of times, um, you know, like maybe for not being, I've been in a few bands. Obviously, they didn't end well because I'm not in them anymore. True. And and um, bands are in a lot of ways like relationships. But harder because they're usually with two or three other people as opposed with one other person. So yeah. instead of pleasing one other person, you got to please two to three to four, or if you're like in a ska band, ten other people. <laughs> and um, find people that you feel comfortable with to be yourself and that you can be creative around. Because definitely in past projects I've been, it, it can be tough if you don't feel like you can be yourself, if you can grow in the way, because if you kind of hang out with people that don't encourage you or that don't like think a lot, think similarly, or that can, you can bounce ideas off of, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be very stifling. It can be just a stifling. It's like being in a toxic relationship. You know, you're kind of just going backwards or like staying stagnant. Yep. So it, it's definitely like being in the dating scene, man. You just got to find people that you like playing with, that you like as human beings and that you can just play music with them and it just feels seamless. And that's hard to find, easier said than done, you know. Like I said, I'm in the May before, and I, I love those folks to death. Um, I've, I've never been more comfortable in a group, and mm -hmm. I've never been more happy in a group. I, this is probably, I definitely wouldn't say I've, like, peaked yet. I still feel like I'm as creative as I've ever been. So that's probably what I would just tell young people, is just get used to being embarrassed, get used to being uncomfortable, and then find people that you can bounce ideas off of. That's probably the two things that I wish I would have done more right out the bat. And see, that's why I asked this question because nobody has answered that in three and a half years. Mm. Nobody has said that. And that is the truth. It's the magic happens when you get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. For like, sure. like, I remember many years of open mics mm -hmm. and just being, you know, just. I, I literally would, would sit there and tell myself before I went on, they're lucky to see you. They're lucky to see you. They're here. You know, <laughs> like I had to yeah. talk myself. I, I was my own hype man because no one else would be. Just they're on their underwear. Mm, no, no. no. I, I was literally like, you're going to do great. They're going to be happy with you. And I would go out and I would perform with that confidence because I had to have that because I didn't have any experience. I yeah. didn't have any good shows of like, you know, and then years later at the House of Blues, I had a kid ask me after our set, "Hey, can I get your pick?" <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah, dog. It's as, as no a singer who he happens used to, to play, no cap. <laughs> no, this was not the, this oh, this was, was, that. Was before that, this is a long time ago. This okay. was radical, dude. Anyway, uh, no, this was the this was two thousand okay. something. But uh, okay, but but at that point, I that was a check it off my rock star list. Bink, and I had that moment of oh. He, He's not doing that because of who I am now. Yeah. He's doing that in case. Yeah, in case I become a thing or we become a thing. Yeah. But it was still really cool. But yeah, believe in yourself. And if, if, if you can't believe in yourself, fake it. Because no one else is going to do it for you until you, one day you're going to realize, oh, holy crap, people like what I do. And, and if you bomb, it's not the end of the world. No. Um, oh, God, that I, is the... Being, being a teacher... Yes. And definitely, like, post-pandemic, it's just, like, anxiety is through the roof these days. But, like, just, yep. you know, this this past school year was the first year we had, like, we didn't have concerts during Zoom school. Right. You know, Zoom during, school. During, during that nightmare. But um, a lot of my students, they would just, like, be freaking out. The concert's getting close. I'm like, mister, what what if I what if I mess up? I'm like, I'm like well, dude, it's, it's not the end of the world. If you right. mess up, it'll be okay. I guarantee you it's not going to feel good. But it won't define you, okay? You just got to keep moving, and next time, don't do it. Exactly. And, and I promise, I guarantee you, people are not going to remember. And if that's a moment that people try to tether you to, it's screw them. They're not. They're not for your success anyway, dude. Like I promise, yep. I guarantee you, if 
Like, take it from me. I've been around the block a while. I've been, I guarantee you, whatever you've done, I've probably done something way more embarrassing and way more terrible. And mm-hmm. and here I am. Look at me, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I turned out fine. I was awesome. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that, um, but, yeah. Awesome. Like, that's... <laughs> Just, just get embarrassed, man. Yep. Go embarrass yourself Honestly, until it's, you're numb to it. Yeah. Right. I and, and the only thing I'm going to add to that before we say before we go up to stairs to room six, uh, in something that totally didn't happen yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go up to the performance, I'm just going to say one more thing. When you perform, it's your moment. They're not going to remember it in two weeks or a month from now. You'll remember it. Mm-hmm. I still remember my very first ever performance in front of people doing my own original music and it was terrifying but is, yeah. you know my dad actually was there and, and when he was alive and he uh, bought a letter opener for me and engraved it with where I performed no cap no cap <laughs> lit That's no lit, it, it, it was so it was one of those weird like here I got you a letter opener thank you and then you look at it you're like thank you this is something that's that, cool yeah. that's really cool and 50 year old me looks back now at 20 something year old me and be like yeah, dude, that was a moment. No one that That's was really that, cool. no one that saw me perform at the living room in San Diego, which was literally a house converted into a coffee shop. That, mm-hmm. No one remembers me and my roommate at the time playing that show. Brett, if you're watching this, you remember that show. Yeah, uh, Brett, looking at you, dude. Yeah, and but but you you know in the end, memento mori. We're 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 all gonna die. Embrace it for the moment it is for you. And make it the best moment you can for you. And anybody who else who comes up and says, great job, that was a good set. Say thank you and, and be, you know, appropriately thankful and, and humble about it. But there's they're going to move on to the next show just like you will. So don't let any, like he said, don't let it define you. Don't hang on to the past. Just, just enjoy the you moment. You just got to make sure you yep. plan to, so that doesn't happen again. Oh, we went very Buddhist and... Down. I know, right? I'm talking to the Cleveland Browns of this. How's that? <laughs> How's that happen? Right on. Well, in the meantime, hang in there. We'll see you upstairs in room six. And uh, yeah, after that, catch you on the outro. In the meantime, see you upstairs. This one is a little improv. So we'll call it improv for room six.
All right, if you made it this far in, congratulations. This one's called I Can't Stop It. She walks the beach with the scent of a rose. The tepid water splashes on her toes. She scans skies with indifferent eyes. She stops and sighs of the reasons I'm not sure why, but good vibrations start to fill the air. As the summer wind blows through her hair, my mind is racing and it's telling me no, but I can't help but to be drawn to her. My body's aching and my heart it stirs. It's killing me how much I want her. Her eyes remind as I give in a desire, cause I'll be goddamned if I don't light this fire. As the sunshine turns to twilight. You can hold on to me for tonight Like the ocean, your eyes, they shine Glowing so clearly with an honest audacity You're bound to leave me of this, I'm sure Wait till the sunrise to say you just can't stay anymore. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop the way you're making me feel now, baby. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop the way you're making my heart be crazy. Years have passed. Since I'd seen her last I'd grown much older And much wiser too But then one fateful day Long after her memory faded away Her path crossed mine once more The sight of her made me fall to the floor But good vibrations start to fill the air as the summer wind blows through her hair My mind is racing and it's telling me no But I can't help but to be drawn to her My body's aching and my heart it stirs It's killing me how much I want her Her eyes remind as I give in a desire Cause I'll be goddamned if I don't light this fire As the sunshine turns to twilight you can hold on to me for tonight Like the ocean, your eyes, they shine Glowing so clearly with an honest audacity You're bound to leave me of this, I'm sure Wait till the sunrise to say you just can't stay anymore. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop the way you're making me feel now, baby. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop the way you're making my heart be crazy. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop. It. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. No. All right. If I haven't scared you away yet, you'll love this one. This one's called Waiting. The sun has risen and Once again I find you've gone missing You keep on playing your games and Once again I find myself waiting and waiting and waiting for you Ooh, I just can't take any more The way you torture me just for sport and though you hurt me so, I'm still here by the phone, waiting and waiting and waiting for you. Ooh. Why can I stop loving you? How could I be such a fool? Doom, 
to a lifetime of waiting and waiting and waiting for you. Ooh, I guess I'll wait till the sun don't rise, till the ocean dries, till there's no life left in these eyes. I'm just a slave to a stubborn heart tearing me apart over you. Perfectly clear that you will never be mine I'm just wasting my time Why can't I just change your mind? I don't know why I can't let you go What on earth am I waiting for? Just the devil knows for sure You left town and you moved on with your life Found a nice guy who asked you to be his wife You smiled as you told him yes and My delusions kept me waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for you Ooh, the sun is setting And years are passing since you stood at your wedding And though I'm happy for you I'm so secretly waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for you. Ooh. Why can I stop loving you? How could I be such a fool? Doomed to a lifetime of waiting and waiting and waiting for you. Ooh. I guess I'll wait till the sun don't rise, till the ocean dries, till there's no life left in these eyes. I'm just a slave to a stubborn heart, tearing me apart over you. It's perfectly clear that you will never be mine. I'm just wasting my time. Why can't I just change your mind? I don't know why I can't let you go. What on earth am I waiting for? Just the devil knows for sure The sun is setting Years have passed since you stood at your wedding And though I'm happy for you I'm still secretly waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for you, waiting for you. All right, YouTube, thanks for sticking around. This one's called I'm Glad You're Here. Hence, I'm glad you're here, YouTube. If you think this song sucks, be sh feel free to tell me in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe for Homeboy Josh. I know it's hard to wake up in the morning And find the strength to go another day it's hard to smile when inside you're hurting But I'm glad that you're here with me today I know it's difficult to feel unwanted When people make you feel that you don't matter Before you let yourself descend to sadness no, I'm glad that you're here with me today I'm so happy I'm so happy I'm so happy That you're here with me today Don't let this state of mind let you fall behind Take my word for it This feeling ain't infinite I know that life gets tough But whatever you do, don't ever give up Believe me when I say 
I'm glad you're here. I hope my song has given you my blessing. To let you know how much I think you're worth. Now dry those tears and fill your life with laughter And come be glad Here with me I want to thank Chris Dunn for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to know more about him and the maybe four, check the description. There's links down there. If you want to support the channel, like I said, hit me up using the Room 6 social media link. There's all sorts of ways you can support the channel. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would really make a difference. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Uh, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Chris. Cheerio.